How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another episode. Today I'll show you how to convert hand mixed recipes to be made in a mixer. Quite a few people have asked me about this, so let's go to the kitchen and check it out. Kneading bread dough by hand can be a very satisfying and rewarding process. And besides, most of us have two hands and a table, so it is the most accessible way of kneading dough. But if you are lucky enough to own a mixer, you might as well use it, right? There are many different mixers out there. Some are stronger, some are weaker, some have large bowls, some have small bowls. But they all have a bowl and a dough hook. And that's what makes the kneading process different. Instead of pressing the dough, it's turning it. And a mixer can be a lot stronger than our hands. As always in bread making, there are many variables. There is no one size fits all answer. It always depends. But I will cover enough information in this video so that you can convert a recipe from hand kneaded to machine mixed. Just look at this beauty. It's about six years old, but it looks brand new. It's because I never use it. This is a heavy duty KitchenAid. It's one of the biggest ones they sell. It comes with six speed settings and a 3.5 kilo or seven quart bowl. Your mixer may be very different from this one. Yours might have a very small bowl and just three settings, and that's totally fine. We are not going to focus on the size. However, the speed settings are very important. Now I'm not going to talk about revolutions per minute, because that just complicates things. The main thing to know is that bread dough should be mixed on slower speeds. The higher the speed, the more aggressive the mixing. There is more of a chance of the dough overheating. And there's a risk of overmixing and the gluten breaking down. And I will make a separate video about overmixing in the future too. So as you can see, the highest speed is quite violent on this one. So from the six speed settings, I would always stick to the first two. Start the mix off on the slowest speed and then finish it on the second speed. This makes it gentle enough to kind of replicate hand kneading. And when you look at it, first speed and second speed look very similar. So if your mixer has only three speeds, for instance, and it goes from really slow to quite fast, then you may want to stick to first speed only. And of course, in that case, you may need to mix for slightly longer. I'm going to show you how it works on my mixer, so you get a good idea and a baseline to work from. First, let's get back to hand kneading for a second. In order to convert a recipe, you need a recipe, right? So this will be a pretty standard 65% hydration white bread dough. Now, if you are able to knead dough by hand, then you should definitely learn to do it. Using a mixer takes away that tactile experience, and you cannot feel the dough developing over time. Remember, the mixer doesn't make the dough for you. It just helps you. You're still in charge of the outcome. And if you don't know how the dough should feel, how would you know when it's ready? Okay, so at 64% hydration, I would knead this kind of dough by hand for about 6 minutes. So let's set the timer and see how the dough develops over time. At the halfway point, it's pretty cohesive. It is not a shaggy mess anymore, it's not as sticky as it was before. But it still stretches and tears very easily, and it definitely needs longer. I don't believe there's any bread dough out there that can be mixed in just 3 minutes. Perhaps just one that is very small. Right, let's give it 2 more minutes and see how it changes. As I keep kneading and the time goes on, I feel the dough becoming less and less sticky. I feel it becoming tighter. So if we look at it now, it's a little bit smoother. It doesn't stick to my hands as much. And when I pull it, it resists more. And if this was closer to 60% hydration, it will be done by now. But at 64, it's still a little bit sticky, so we'll give it one more minute. And if you want to learn more about hand kneading, check out the video and the principles of baking playlist. Okay, so 6 minutes have passed. The dough is nice and tight. It's not very sticky. It's nice and smooth. Of course, it's hard to explain to someone how it should feel. That should be learned by the person making it. And it does take time and practice. But once you know, you know. And I would say if you are just starting out in bread making and you want to get a mixer, then before committing, first practice by hand. And if you do decide to get a mixer, you will already have the skills to use it effectively. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my mixing bowl is quite large. But in my videos and my recipes, we usually work with dough balls that are quite small. And I always thought about this as a problem when converting recipes. And I guess that's why I didn't tackle this project sooner. I always thought that the bowl is so large that the mixer won't be able to mix the dough effectively. And perhaps the dough hook might not be able to reach the dough. So let's try and make the same dough in this huge mixing bowl. Now whenever I've made dough in a mixer, or I've seen anyone else make dough in a mixer, this would be the way that it's done. You would add all the ingredients, bring the bowl to the mixer, pop the dough hook in, lift it up, switch it on, and just leave it to mix. We'll follow the exact same timings as in the previous recipe. We'll mix for 3 minutes, check the dough, mix for 2 more minutes, then check it again, and then give it 1 more minute. Straight away we can see an issue. When mixing by hand, right from the first second, we were kneading the dough. But with the mixer, it's been already 3 minutes, but it has not picked up all the ingredients yet. So this is definitely not a good method. 
whether you're converting a recipe or you're writing a brand new recipe. I'll still finish the mix and we'll see what we get at the end. Whilst this is going on, let's talk about one more important thing, temperature control. I have found that my mixer warms up the dough at pretty much the same rate as my hands do. My hands are much warmer than the mixer, but the mixer is stronger. Yours may be different. One sure way to find out is to hand knead the dough for a certain amount of time and mix the dough in the mixer for a certain amount of time, and then compare the temperature difference. And if you want to learn more about temperature control, I have a separate video on the principles of baking playlist. I would say if you want to convert a recipe, don't play around with it too much. Just convert it, use the same temperatures as you would for hand kneading, then see how it compares. It's always good to set a reliable baseline to work from. Right, so the six minutes are up. The dough looks pretty good, but that is only because I switched to a higher speed. And that is where things can go wrong. It took so long for the dough hook to pull the ingredients together that I had to increase the speed to stick to the time. And as I said earlier, higher speeds equals more temperature and the risk of destroying the gluten. We need a more reliable way of converting a recipe. And for that, we are going to use the same principles as we did for hand kneading. Combine the ingredients in the bowl, then we'll grab the dough hook or just use our hands and mix them together until there's no more dry flour left. This will ensure that the dough is being kneaded from the second that we switch on the mixer. It is so simple and obvious, but it's rarely done like this. For a home baker, this is definitely the method to use. Of course, if you're mixing 30 kilos of dough, this might not be practical. But if you're just making a couple of loaves of bread, this method will keep things consistent and predictable. Now we can utilize the slow and gentle speeds because there's no need to mix at a higher speed. So we'll do three minutes on the first speed, then we'll check the dough, see how it's doing, give it a pull, give it a squeeze, then we'll increase the speed slightly, we'll mix it for two more minutes, check again, then we'll mix it for one more minute at the end. Now if a recipe calls for the addition of butter halfway through the mix, then you want to add it in chunks as the mixer is turning. Do not include the time that it takes to add the butter. Only count from the second that you finish adding the butter. Such a recipe may require a slight increase in speed at the end. So perhaps with an enriched dough, you might want to use slightly cooler ingredients because it may take longer to mix. As I said, there's no one size fits all answer. If you learn to feel the dough by hand, then you can also learn to feel the dough as it's made in a mixer. If you want to add extra ingredients like olives or dried fruit or cheese perhaps, and add those ingredients about 30 seconds before the mix is finished. Okay, so here we are. This looks and feels very similar to the first dough that I made by hand. So I would say this is a successful conversion from hand mixing to machine mixing. This is of course just one example. Other recipes have other requirements, different ingredients and different ratios. But we have a very good baseline to work from. So if you want to convert a recipe from hand mixing to machine mixing, especially if it's one of my recipes, then first, mix all the ingredients in the bowl until there's no more dry flour left. Then bring the bowl over to the mixer. Mix the dough on the lowest speed for half of the time given in the recipe. Then finish the other half on second speed. This way you don't have to mess around with changing timings. Just follow the given times in a hand kneaded recipe. Follow the same temperature control. And if it turns out a little bit off one way or another, then go back and adjust. And don't forget to read the written article on my website link below. I always write down information that I forgot to say in the video. I hope you found this useful and I do hope you will try and convert some recipes to be made in a mixer. Let me know down in the comments how it goes. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.